Off on the surface might be a little something like this. Where would Edgeworld be without such great villains? We could argue for hours about who the best Edgeworld villains are. There's probably a debate to be had about who even counts as a villain. Is Lucifer a villain? Is the King of Atlantis a villain? And what about... Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Let's just focus on the ones that really matter. The fan favourite bad guys that we'd be incomplete without. I've already made a video where I spoke for 11 minutes and 12 seconds about Eduardo, Mark and John, possibly the most beloved secondary characters in the show and arguably the quote unquote main antagonists of Ed's world nowadays. But back in the day, long before any bad neighbours showed their faces, the main obstacle for the guys undoubtedly came in the form of zombies. Zombies are a classic of horror and action cinema, and they saw a massive resurgence in popularity between the mid-2000s and early 2010s. These monsters have very clear and universally understood rules, but those rules can be altered in almost any way, making them super easy to work with. Like, one story could have the dead coming back to life, trying to eat human brains, and another could have a virus turn people into fast-moving savages infecting people with a single bite and both would be zombie movies. The mechanics of the zombie are immaterial, it's the horrifying notion of a swarm of possessed cannibals that makes them so interesting. Zombies were everywhere back in the day. Zombies became a cliché. Zombies became a parody. Zombie parodies became a cliché. And we still loved them, because why wouldn't we? The Walking Dead is an inherently horrifying concept, effortlessly intimidating at any scale, whether it be just a couple or an entire infected planet. Uncaring, unfeeling, unflinching waves of bodies whose only purpose is to catch you kill you and infect you too. Zombie movies are also, more often than not, incredibly violent and loads of fun. And I think that's why they were such a staple of the internet in that weird teething period between MySpace and Vine. I say Colorado! When the social internet was largely a bunch of nerdy, film-loving teenage boys allowed to make short films about whatever they wanted before any real internet regulation, of course they were going to make zombie movies. Uh, of course they were. Early Edsworld used this flexible canon to make a trilogy of shorts and a standalone episode inspired by beloved horror movies. The credits even thank the films that inspired them. And when it was time for the first full-length legacy animation, they went back to the classics with Funded, the highest viewed episode to this day. Of course there are other recurring villains that may spring to mind, and probably my favourite just so happens to be a zombie as well. I think Santa Claus is an absolutely wonderful creation. This is the type of character you'd come up with during a late night drawing session that you kind of just fall in love with. It's almost like Ed started with a name or an idea and then he drew this guy and he just knew he had to make a video about him. And then he made three. I don't think it's a coincidence that the Santa Claus episodes are some of the best and most memorable episodes of the classic era. They've aged like a gem, and Santa Claus himself, I think, is a big part of that. He brings to life this perfect blend of jolly and gothic, and Josh Tomar does an amazing job bringing this character to life. Xander is also a great example of the redeemed villain, a bad guy who joins the heroes for the greater good, which I think is kind of cool. The only villain that can even compete with him for me is the evil director. This guy might just be my favourite character in the entire show. He reaches this perfect level of stupid and absurd, he barely does anything evil, yet he revels in his villainy, and he's just got a really great voice. Genuinely, I love the passion that Bing brings to this guy, he just has the perfect voice for animation like this. In more recent times, we've had some pretty memorable one-off villains as well, including what I believe to be the only crossover villain in the show's history, Kate the Witch from Trick or Threat. She uses satanic magic to possess Ed and Matt, though fails with Tom because he doesn't have eyes to make pink. We know her name is Kate because this isn't her only appearance. The guy who produced Ed's World Legacy and voiced Tom up until 2016 actually has his own web series called Crash Zoom, where he voices one of the main characters. It's a great show, and I highly recommend it if you enjoyed any of the older modern Ed's World episodes. The Rose Kazoo. It's been in our family for- Ooh, can I have a go? 
And if you haven't worked it out yet, this is where Kate the Witch comes from. She's one of the main characters of that show. Though we don't technically hear her speak in Ed's world and we only barely get to see her face, here she is at the end of a Crash Zoom episode called Firing Squad, extracting some kind of apparition, and yeah, that is definitely her. This isn't a standalone anomaly either, with characters crossing between Crash Zoom and Ed's world multiple times during a brief crossover period. It was a well-documented crossover universe, possibly created to set up a third show that's been in development for over a decade. Nowadays, the relationship between Ed's world and Crash Zoom is a little more complicated in that it no longer exists. The curious case of Tom Scar and Ed's world is one that I'd really rather not get into. Someone else could make that video because I'm not going to. But it's safe to say that none of this Crash Zoom stuff is canon anymore. That being said, there are still plenty of ideas from this time that could be used again, or altered slightly with a little bit of retroactive continuity. It's been six whole minutes and I haven't talked about the red guy yet, that's probably a record for me. Tord may be the most well-known villain in the show despite being just a one-off twist villain. Tord shows up in the first part of the end as a good guy, with some mutual aggression between him and Tom, but after some very unsubtle foreshadowing, it turns out that Tord has more evil intentions. This is an example of a twist villain, because within the confines of this particular story, Tord wasn't set up to be a bad guy. Only after he drives out Tom is Tord's dark side brought into the light. That's not to say Tord has always been unambiguously good though. There are countless examples in early Ed's world of Tord's rivalry with the other guys. The dude at next door was all about him and Ed fighting over a girl, and breakfast was all about him and Ed fighting over a piece of bacon. Then there's the Christmas special, where he invaded part of Norway, and Zombie Attack 2, where he recruited Ed to beat Matt and, yes, Tom, to the Necronomicon. He is a violent bloke, playing payball with real guns and being the only one in the British Army who's happy to be there because he gets to use guns and jetpacks and stuff. And let's not forget that he's not the only protagonist to get a shot at villainy. Santa Claus 3 was all about Tom's drunken destruction spree in the name of hating the holiday. What the future saw Ed trying to go through with attempted murder, willing to kill all of his friends to spare himself from a soda-free future. And then there's Matt, and I made an entire video about him and all his problems. All of the protagonists have capacity for selfishness, and all of them constantly hated each other in the early episodes. Tord's violence was just the most established, and it made a lot of sense for him to come back as a villain for the one episode. And if anyone tries to convince you that this was a step too far, or betrayed his character in any way, they probably missed what made Tord so good to begin with. Villains really don't get enough love sometimes. Everyone loves a good hero, but I find that good stories often live or die based on how interesting the baddies are. They're the catalyst for pushing the heroes to their limits where the best stories occur. And in comedies especially, it's impossible to underestimate just how big of a role that villains play. A big and entertaining personality is essential for these sorts of roles. And if you ask me, Edsworld delivers that in spades. So that takes us all the way back to the beginning. Where would Ed's world be without such great villains? I don't know, the episodes would be a lot shorter, I guess.